We just heard from Kathy Wood saying she thinks the advertising subscription model that may be being pursued by Elon Musk is a good one. She also told me at the, in the interview that she, you know the route that you've seen in terms of advertising uh, sales falling, particularly for the likes of Meta and Alphabet and Amazon. Where are we in the downturn on ad spend? I know you like to sensationalize everything, Tom, but it's not a route, right? Okay, if we looked at Google, Q3, actually, constant currency up 11%. There'd be a lot of people that would die for that. Amazon actually up a third from about 31 billion last year, projecting about 40 billion in ad revenues this year. Meta is the issue. I mean, the big factors in the digital marketplace, about 450 billion last year, probably 500 billion this year. Google, 200, 205 last year, 225 this year. Meta, stable. 115 that's where the issues are Amazon going from 30 to 40 and of course TikTok is the big grower along with people forget Apple is growing its ad platform to probably about 7 billion this year and Microsoft around 10 and if Microsoft mm -hmm. takes out Activision which looks as though it probably will happen that will make it an even bigger force in advertising so you have to be a little bit more nuanced I think uh, if one looks at, at sort of things like snap and Twitter they're, they're not exactly rounding errors but they each of them them, each of those two platforms, about 1% of global digital media, if you assume that all yeah. their revenues were US, it would be 2%. So these are not really guidelines to what's happening in the marketplace. The key platforms, the key ones, yeah. are Alphabet, and Meta, and Amazon, those are, and TikTok. Those are the four. I know, and I know you were watching the Fed and Jay Powell very closely <laughs> yesterday. I was watching we, we, in New York, yes. Of course, we're going to another 75 basis points. The yes. market ended up selling off yeah. on the back of the commentary from Jay Powell. Yeah. Of course, the view is that you get into a recessionary environment in the US from a number of right. economists as a result of this hike. And we've got the BOE right. uh, later today. Get into that recessionary environment. What does that mean uh, for, for the ad spend well, I, going forward as we look at the quarters ahead? It's very difficult to forecast this thing, and you shouldn't really forecast, but I'll go ahead and yep. forecast. I, I think uh, that the rates of inflation are going to end up higher than we think, so higher than 2%. I don't think you'll be able to pull it back to that. And interest rates will be lower than we think. The terminal rates will end up being lower because I think that people will start to get worried about the impact. The, the Fed has a dual mandate. It's not only about controlling inflation, it's about unemployment. Same for the Bank of England. So I think there'll be more balance. It'll be a bit more nuanced in, in time. But look, the, the honest answer is that the rates of growth of digital advertising have slowed, but they are still strong. When I look at 2023, and we're starting our planning and budgeting process for next year, one thing is for sure, digital this year is about probably 60, 65% of client budgets. Next year, it's going to be 65 to 70, and by 2025, it's going to be 75%. Linear TV and linear and analog media are going to be under pressure. That's where the pressure is going to be in, in network TV, in traditional outdoor, in traditional radio, in traditional newspapers and magazines. Digital is going to continue to prosper. And the reason is clients are going to be looking for a performance next year. The pressure from a CEO or a CFO on the CMO is going to be, let's look for volume and look for growth. And that means performance, activation, measurement, media mix modeling are all, we're down the funnel yeah. at S4 and Media Monks, our operating brand. That plays to our strengths because we're more about results. And that's going to be really important okay, next and year. You, talk, you touched on Twitter. What, yeah. what are your clients saying about concerns wait around and wait, wait and see? Yeah. Um, and it's, is it is about I mean, content? There's it's a about lot of, reactivating some of those accounts? No, it's, it's about, about controversy? Moderation. 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 Okay. And when it's not clear yet from Elon Musk where he is on that. And he's announced the Moderation Council, not dissimilar to what we saw with Meta or Facebook. The question is, how is that going to operate? I mean, we have, there's an inconsistency already, even in the first week. He has to be really clear on what he's going to do on moderating content. You know, will President Trump be allowed back? When President Trump was taken off the Twitter platform, actually users went up by about 21%. So we have to see, clients don't want conflict, they don't want controversy, they want a sort of stable environment. And what we've seen in the last week or so is too too much inconsistency. He has to lay out the point. Twitter has not been historically very flexible in dealing with advertisers. They redline their, when we come down to contractual provisions, they're, they're very, very inflexible. They have to be much more flexible in what they in how they negotiate with advertisers. They've got to listen more uh, and they've got to lay out a, a 
a discreet policy around moderation. That's the key issue. Both Facebook, Meta, and Alphabet and Google have been, have been investing very heavily in moderating content, and that's a big issue that, that has to be settled. Okay, I want to bring you back to S4 Capital. Right. GLG Group coming out yeah. publicly <laughs> with a short position on SV, uh, S4 Capital. But presumably you disagree, disagree well, with it. What would, I you, mean, what would your message be, be to GLG? I don't think it was... Uh, we talk to GLG yeah. all the time. They know what our messages are. They know what our top-line growth is. They know what our objectives are for this year and D for next year. So first half of the year, top line was up by 28%. We'll be announcing our third quarter results on November the 14th, and we've indicated July and August continued. The interesting thing about our business is, uh, you know, it is governed to some extent by the growth of the platforms, but it continues to be very strong. So wait for November the 14th, very, very briefly and GLG on, and others will see. Very briefly on UK politics. Are yes. you reassured now uh, under the leadership well, we of Richard? Uh, we have an adult in the room, thank goodness at last uh, and I think Rishi Sunak has the, the the capabilities and qualities that are needed at this particular point in time for the UK economy but we face huge challenges as does the whole of Europe you know we face three big issues globally US and China divergence Russia what happens as a result of the war and after, if there is an after, and lastly, Iran. Those are the three big challenges, and the world is a very fragmented place. It, it, the last 50 years, didn't matter where you were, as long as the demographics suited wherever you planted your flag, you succeeded. It's going to be a much more fractured and fragmented world, both geographically and functionally. So North and South America, to me, big opportunities, despite the leftward shift in South America. Middle East, energy prices are going to continue to be strong. So the Middle East offers lots of opportunities. Africa is very volatile. Europe, very difficult. UK, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, all face big challenges, both in the short, medium, and long term. And then Asia, with a caveat around China. You know, most of our clients who have big positions in China are worried about what the implications of Taiwanese policy will be for security and growth. So countries such as India, Vietnam, which grew last year, I think, by 13.5% GDP, yeah. uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, these are all areas of the world that will become increasingly important so lots of opportunity but in a very fragmented way and then functionally we talked yep. about digital we're a purely digital business our growth rates continue to be extremely strong and that will continue to be okay. the case